I'm beach fishing with some beautiful fresh squid that I caught and also some of those amazing beach worms. Hi, my name's Roger Osborne. In this video, I'm gonna be tossing some of those lovely baits out just before dark, hoping to catch some really good eating fish. And in this video, I'll be showing you everything that I'm doing, my kit, my rod, my reel, explaining why I'm here, where I'm casting, etc. If you're learning some things from my videos, that's awesome. That's the whole reason that I do them. Please make sure that you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Let's get started. So I've come down here. It's a lovely little gutter here. Great setup. I just want to catch a few worms first. So I didn't bring any with me. I'm just going to grab a few. It seems it's just after low tide. There should be a few worms here. So, and it looks pretty good. So that's the plan. Okay, worm number one. I haven't wormed at this beach, gosh. It'd be, I don't know, I probably haven't wormed here for a year. But um, there's worms on most of the beaches. These worms are not very big, but they're okay for brim and whiting. And you really only need about half a dozen worms. You could actually catch a good feed for your family with just five or six worms because you get a few baits out of each worm. If you'd like to learn how to catch beach worms, make sure that you check out my beach worming masterclass on my website. I spent a couple of years actually creating the most thorough teaching on catching beach worms and heaps of people are having great success. So it's a wonderful thing to learn. Ooh, he's kind of hanging around. He's obviously feeling like something, look at that. He is. Okay, here comes a bigger wave. We'll have to wait. Just gonna wait for that little break. Oh, yeah, he's sticking his head out well and truly, isn't he? Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, just a nice size for bait. Not too big, but you get two or three lovely baits from him. Oh, he's hungry. Look at this guy. Very hungry. Oh! <laughs> Man, I didn't hold on to him tight enough. I had him there, I was too keen. Bit of a long skinny one. <laughs> but he'll be alright for bait. Just fold him up like a little piece of spaghetti. This guy is pretty big. I can see a wave coming, so I'm going to have to get him... Okay, now I want him to come out and grab onto it. I'm going to need to go deep with this worm because he's so solid. All right, I'm going to grab him now. Oh, man. He pulled straight through my fingers. I was ready to get him. <laughs> I've caught worms much bigger than that. But yeah, just wasn't in the zone then. <laughs> and excited. Ah, okay. Just another beautiful bait size worm. So I'm just going to wave here and see if I can see any worms just in this little section here, if anything wants to come up. Oh, there's a crab. Oh, there's a worm down here, actually. Now, just in front of me here, I'm just catching a couple of beach worms, but there's a wonderful little trough just here. You can see there's a sandbar behind it, but straight in front of me there's a, a really beautiful, deep little trough there. That is the sort of place that, you know, it's totally widening city in a little depression like that, and it's really only 15 metres from the shore. I'm probably going to pop a bait in there. Once I've caught a couple of worms, I think I'm going to chuck one in there, actually. Really, it's almost like an underarm throw. It's so, it's so close to shore. It's beautiful. I love that sort of water. The worm here, well there it is. Okay, so that's a slightly bigger one. You're gonna get quite a few baits out of a worm like this. You've gotta fold them up in order to put them in your bait bucket. You get a lot of worms like this up on the north coast of New South Wales. 
these seem to be the predominant variety, you know, from about Hawk's Nest North, really, you get a lot of these ones. But they are fantastic bait. Oh, there's another good one here. This guy looks a little bit bigger. A different type of worm to the last worm. This is one of uh, what they call stumpy worms. They don't grow as long, but they get much thicker. So hopefully he's hungry. Okay, just got to get him nice and deep, this guy. Ah, oh, yep. Yeah. Okay, so he's just a little bit bigger and a little bit fatter than the previous ones. I think that'll do us. It's time to go fishing. I don't really need a lot, just enough to catch uh, a few fish. The bag limit for worms is 20, but you really don't need 20 worms. You know, I mean, most, most se sessions I might use eight or 10 and catch as many fish as I need for dinner. Just gonna crumb these little fellas. Before I throw my squid out, I'm going to have a fish with the worms first because I want to wait a little bit until it gets just a little bit darker before I put that squid on. And I'm using a light 10 foot beach rod coupled with a, what size, it's a 5,000 size reel, you can see here. I have this reel spooled with 15 pound monofilament line and I've got a two hook rig. I'm using a star sinker with one one dropper below the star sinker and one up higher um, and I have worm hooks for the worms. Now I'm going to chuck out in this little gutter which is straight in front of me but also I'd like to walk down where I was worming and have a cast down there because that looked really cool down there. I mean really close to shore but we'll see we'll, we'll have a fish out here first. I like to have some sand on the worms, otherwise they're too slippery to um, thread onto your hook, unless you have a bit of sand. So at the moment it's about an hour before dark right now. It's a good time of the day. So I'm threading this worm up, right up over the, over the top of the hook and onto the line. The hook ends at about there. So it's just a lovely nice long piece of worm and I'll chop him off about there. So I've just got a nice, nice chunky piece of worm. Let's just see what happens in this spot. I can see there's a current moving from my left to my right, but I just want to toss at the back of that sandbar. And just see if there's any brim and whiting in there. You could get a salmon here as well, but more interested in catching the brim and the whiting. So I'm going to cast pretty much straight out in front of me. I'm going to land my bait on the shallow area and pull it towards me over the edge of the trough. It won't take a huge cast to get out there. So I'm just going to go straight out and I'm going to land pretty much about where I want it. Actually I landed yeah, on the shallow so I'm going to pull it forward a little bit just over the edge. We'll see how much drift there is. Hang on, I'm getting a bite already. Can you believe that? Man, that was quick. That was so quick. It feels good actually, it's a nice fish. Wow, I tell you what, the fish are certainly there. That's for sure. What a great, what a great result. Just going to, um, I'm just taking my time. No great rush. Oh, look at this. Get a load of this. Look at that. Two fish. Oh, look at that. This one is a really big brim. 
He's a ripper of a fish. Absolute ripper. Just got to grab him so I don't get tangled. Look at that guy. That is a, a stunning brim. And the other fish that just got off was, believe it or not, was a mullet. <laughs> so I had a, a double hook up with brim and mullet. Man, I know what's going to happen. I mean, that was so quick. It, it was way less than a minute before I got that. But look at that fish. That is as good a brim as you'd want to get. An absolute ripping fish. So I'm going to take him up and, wow, pretty excited. I haven't fished here or wormed here for quite a while, but the area where I live, all of the beaches are amazing. They all have fish. It just depends on the particular conditions on the day. Oops, I'm up here. So I think that that was about 15 seconds to catch that brim. <laughs> we are so blessed with amazing beaches to fish. So I'm going to chuck it in exactly the same spot and see if it happens again. I'm pretty sure it will. I'm going to cast onto the sandbar and pull it into the edge of the deep. Yep, exactly. Let's just see. It's pretty much almost exactly the same spot. That was really cool how there was one of those fish was a mullet. Okay, so I haven't had a bite yet. Yep, I'm getting a bite now. Okay, yep, I'm just going to wait for a second. I was definitely getting a few whacks then. I was just waiting. I thought I'm not going to set the hook yet, I'm just going to wait. Pretty sure I wouldn't have lost both of my baits. Just going to wait for a fish to come back. waiting for the right opportunity. I think I'll strike, yeah. Yeah, I've got something. They were not heavy bites. They were kind of more like whiting bites. Could even be a mullet, because I had a mullet on the previous cast. But let's just look and see. Oh, it's a zero. <laughs> So I had my top bait still intact, but my bottom bait is gone. So... I'll just redo that bottom bait again. I thought I had him on. Probably did for a minute. Oh, that's two casts, two bites. I didn't land one that time. I'll just chuck it back in the same zone again. Just had a couple of little bites. I mean, if a decent brim takes it, they, they hit it pretty solidly. There is a bit of drift from left to right, but it's not a full-on sweep. The water is washing off this sandbar into this little trough. I'm actually thinking of casting a little bit to my left, just up in the into the headwaters of this little trough which just starts it starts about 50 meters to my left it's just a little narrow little, little narrow area of uh, slightly deeper water but I expect that the fish will be waiting in there for food to be washed in yeah I think I might wind my line in and cast it out over there because I've covered the ground I threw my line straight out and it's probably drifted a good 20 or 30 meters to the right if I waited, I would ex still expect to get a bite and hook something, but I think I'd rather toss it to my left a little bit. So I'm going to wind it in. I felt a couple of tiny little taps when I first cast it out. Yep, still got plenty of bait, so 
I'm going to hang it over here a little bit. Just get a little bit further up into the corner of this little little uh, trough. Okay, so all right, I'm just going to pull it over the edge there. I could have even gone a little bit further to the left, actually, but we'll give that a go. Well, I had a nibble then. That felt all right. Why didn't it go on with it? That's the question. Hang on, it's coming towards me. Yeah, I have a fish this time. It was swimming towards me. So I was just pulling it in a little bit and... Um, so what have we got? Just gonna lift it up. There you go. A nice whiting. These little troughs that are close to the beach. Oh, sorry about flicking you there. <laughs> These really, these little troughs that are near the shore are such fun to fish and they hold some really beautiful eating fish. So I better not talk too much, otherwise I won't have my line in the water. Okay, so that last cast produced a nice whiting. It's so much fun doing this. Okay, so I'm even going to try a little bit further to the left, just right up into the corner of this little, little spot here. I think the fish are definitely waiting there for the goodies to get washed in. Just take a few steps back. And what's happening is I'm throwing my, my line onto the sandbar and letting it just get washed over the edge, in kind of like over the waterfall, into that Oh, I'm getting a bite now, actually. Yeah, something's going on. I don't like to try and set the hook unless I'm confident that the fish has got hold of the bait and is starting to swim away with it. Yeah, something's going on now. Getting lots of little bites. Uh, I think that they were whiting bites, so not big bites. I've probably lost most of my bait, so I think I'll wind it in. Yeah, I think I'll need to put some more bait on. Let's just have a look and see. Well, my top bait looks all right, but my bottom bait has been taken. So my bottom bait is pretty much, hook is pretty much empty. Let's see if we can get another big grim. further than I needed to then. The current's washing it over the edge of the sandbar into the hole. Yeah, gotcha. I just had to wait a minute then. I was getting lots of little machine gun bites. And just waited a minute before I decided to set the hook. It's a little bit of weight in it, so it should be a reasonable eating fish. Okay, we'll bring him up. Oh yeah, he's a, he's a good whiting. Bigger than the last one, actually. See, that's what you call a classic whiting. He's about 35 centimetres long. We absolutely love eating these. 
So, yeah, pretty good. When I was worming earlier, I mentioned how there's this lovely little trough down there so close to the shore. I've got a couple of nice fish here and I know there's fish out there, but I'm just, I just want to go down and chuck my line in that little hole. I reckon it has to have fish in it. And I'm still trying to work out where I want to put my squid later. There's quite a bit of current out the front here. I'd prefer to be able to cast that out into a spot that has less current. Anyway, I'm going to head down over to this other little spot. It's about 100 metres from where my gear is, but that's all right. This is a really interesting looking little spot because the deep water is right there with that little sandbar behind it. I don't think there'll be much current because I'm kind of right in the middle of it. If I went to the right or to the left, there'd be more current. But I'm just going to st stay in the middle here and just aim to fish just in the middle here. There's lots of turbulence there stirring up the, the bait for the fish. Okay, so I did land on the shallow water. I'm just waiting to drop over the edge towards myself into the deeper water. We'll see if there's as many fish here as in that other spot just up the beach. You'd have to expect that there would be. They're going to be here somewhere in this little spot. I'm just going to walk to the right just a bit. I'm going to leave my bait there where it is. Yep, I'm getting a bite. Just going to wait and see. Yeah. Oops. Had my drag, I'd lo loosened it off when I took that other fish up to the beach. So that didn't really take long to get a bite, and it's another whiting. So I've walked about 100 metres down the beach, and I've got another whiting. So. There's, fish out, there's probably just as many fish out here as there was as there is up in the other spot. Don't you love it when you get your bait back? That fish had the worm in his mouth. But look at that. I got it all back again so I can recycle it. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. It's getting washed towards me. I'm just wondering if that's a fish or if it's just the um, just the wash. No, I think it was just the current. came down to this little spot. I caught a whiting first cast, but it's starting to get a little bit darker. I've had another cast. Haven't had a bite yet, so, but I'm not going to hang here. I'm going to head back up to where my gear was, where I caught the brim and those other whiting. I want to I get my other line ready with the squid. I'm going to chuck my worm line out while I get my other line ready. Yep, that's right on the edge of that sandbar again. That's always where I'm trying to land at the moment in these particular spots. It's going to drift, because I'm not holding it, it'll end up drifting to the right a bit, but it still may catch a fish or two. Just keep my eye on it. Just going to check my set line. I'm still rigging up my other one. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, that was definitely uh, not the current. Hang on. 
What can I feel? Can't feel a fish. No, I don't have one. Pretty sure I don't. Interesting. Maybe that was just the power of the current. Gonna wind it in. Yeah, don't feel like I've got a fish, that's for sure. Where's the end of my line? Yeah, I do actually. I thought I had. You know, my drag was going, that's the, that's the thing. Oh, flip, look at this. <laughs> my drag was actually, um, didn't feel like I had something on because of the drag, but that, that brim is a beast. That's a cracking brim. Look at the size of this guy. Look at that, that's even bigger than the other brim I got. Whoa, what an awesome fish. So double hook up on beach worms, a stonker brim and a nice whiting as well. So, oh well, the set line is doing its job. Oh, g'day, how are you? How's it going? Good, thanks mate, I'd shake your hand, but I got, that's right. I got some smelly worm. Got some and some yeah. Oh, that's a good room. Yeah, the last one's a beast, yeah. Awesome. It's going for a walk? Yeah, I was going for a walk. I saw you pull up the car park and I just I was wondering if I could get like a photo with you or something. Yeah, no problem. That'd be awesome. I love it when people come up and say, I don't mind at all. It's always good to meet people. So if you uh, are down the beach and you and you see me fishing, someone come and say good day. When your line gets caught around the tip of your rod, it helps just to go, just to flick it like this. If ever your line gets wrapped around the top of your rod, you can just hold it down and wiggle it and it'll come off. So I just had that double hook up. I'm gonna whack this back out and leave it in the rod holder again. And then I'm finally gonna to get to put some squid on my other line. Just got my squid here that I caught. It's not a big squid, but I love, I love eating squid and they are a really good bait. You can see this little guy here. I think I might just put the squid head on first, actually. So I whack his head on and then I'll get a couple of baits out of the body as well. Squid are pretty messy things. You can see, look at that ink. All oh, that black ink there. I'm going to leave all these guts and everything on it. I reckon something would love that. So where's my line over here? I have a very simple rig. It's like my world's deadliest rig. I've got a size 2.0 stinger hook and then a 5.0 main hook, which is not massive. But I'm going to chuck this out just like one big lump of squid head and goodies. Really hoping that um, that there's a nice mulloway out there, although I'm not that excited about the current. Because there's a lot of current out there. And um, looks pretty messy, doesn't it? That's all right. Well, I've got a couple of decent hooks in, in, in amongst all of that. Gonna have to go and wash my hands. I think I'm gonna wash my hands before I pick up my rod, otherwise I'll get ink all over my rod. My set line's ended up way down to the right again. I'm not sure if there's a fish on it. Just gonna wait for a second. I think when I chuck it out again, I'm gonna really pelt it out a long way. Just tighten the drag a bit. Can't quite tell. 
the current is quite strong. I don't think I've got anything. If I did it would be small. Oh no. Well, and whiting are not massive fish. It's a eating size whiting. So there was a fish. And uh, he's obviously loved those worms as well. So I'm actually going to very quickly rebate this and then I'm going to chuck that squid bait out. Oh, I actually put in quite a big cast then. Just going to let it get a lot further out the back. I'm going to have the, the drag done up fairly tight. So it'd have to have be a bit of an effort for a fish to actually pull the drag out, but still possible. Now I'm finally going to get my squid rod and uh, chuck that lovely bit of squid out. <laughs> it looks like a pretty untidy bait, but I think the fish will love it. You know, we know there's some really big brim out there. They will, they'll undoubtedly, if there's any of them, they'd really have a go at this squid. I got a fair bit of distance then. Just a little bit concerned how this current is going to affect this squid bait, but see what wants to attack it. The rod I'm using, it's, it's not an ultra heavy rod, it's actually a 12 foot fiberglass beach rod. And the line I'm using on this one's only 20 pounds, so it's not overly heavy. But certainly on 20 pound line, you could pretty much land anything on the beach. And I've got a slightly heavier sinker that will hopefully give me a little bit of relief from the current. It would be great if there was a mulloway sniffing up into this gutter, but I reckon those big brim would really like that squid as well. I think I'm, I've got my squid bait out there. I haven't had a bite on it yet. But I think I might go and put this rod in my rod holder and check my other line that has the worm baits on it. Because it seems to be bouncing around a fair bit. Okay, so yeah, I think I'll pull this one in. Yeah, it's right down the beach. I tossed this one out a fair way out, but it's, it's actually... I threw it straight out, but it's at a 90 degree angle. It's totally sideways down the beach. I don't know if I've got a fish on it or not. I'll wait and see. I might walk down that way. It's just easier. So I have another whiting, which uh, hooked itself. So, you know, it pays to have two rods because, you know, you know, you can actually catch dinner in a relatively short period of time. So I'm just soaking that squid head at the moment. It's 20 to 9, still not quite dark yet. It's getting dark close to 9 o'clock at the moment. High tide is not till about 11, so I'm still two hours before high tide. It's not the perfect setup because of the strong current, but it's still worth putting a nice bait out. You know, so many fishermen don't realize that there really is a lot of strategy behind being successful. It's not difficult, it's just having the knowledge. If improving your fishing skills is something that you're interested in and you'd like to meet other fishermen who are like-minded and actually happy to share their knowledge, why don't you consider joining my membership at rogersfishing.com. We have a fortnightly Zoom where we get together, we talk about strategy, I teach on fishing, and we have a private group, which is like a Facebook group, but it's not. 
where our members share photographs, ask questions. It's really awesome. We have a great community. Also, there's no lock-in contracts. It's just a monthly subscription. And when you join, you get access to all of my fishing courses, which are separate to YouTube. I do a lot of content on YouTube, but I have been working really hard on creating fishing courses that have lots of videos and study notes. So there's heaps of content, heaps of stuff to help you in, improve your fishing. But I'm finding a lot of people are making great friends through it as well. So just check out rogersfishing.com and all the details are on the homepage. I've decided I'm going to um, pull this squid bait in. I've had it in the water for about half an hour. Beautiful piece of squid. I actually haven't had a bite. And there is quite a strong current. So I'm really happy with the session. Caught some amazing fish on those worms, some really big brims, some beautiful whiting. So thank you so much for joining me. I trust that you've learned some more things about beach fishing, how awesome it is. And I'll see you really soon in the next video.